it be that my future isn't odd enough? Is it cause I think your music is innocuous? Or because I don't accept what they offer us? Deception is obvious and popular opinion makes decisions for the youth. They would rather be entertained instead of listening to truth. While market and psychology manipulate your elements, selling you an irrelevant product of unintelligence. Tell me to dumb it down, I tell you to smarten up. The revolution is now, the ending will start with us. The signal we're sending out encourages waking up. Executives look around, it's harder to make a buck. I see you outside. <laughs> get some vitamin D. Hey, I'm not mad at any vitamin D you could get. Hey, yo. D, motherfucking D. You're here. I was gonna go outside, but my um my gazebo sides are down because I had to replace the roof, and that means that the chickens would harass me. And that rooster. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rude. He's so rude. He does not care about anything that I'm doing with my life. And then the chickens want to think that everything that's in my hand is for them to eat. So, no. I understand. I understand. I, guess I soaked up enough D for you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, next week, I'll be live outside in the beauty of, like, the elements. So, how are you this week? I'm okay. I'm good. Uh, things are moving along. I'm good. My kid finished school this week. Okay. So, um, and I don't know if, I don't know how much we talked about this, but sorry, somebody's flying over here. Um, you know, he, we had homeschooled him and he decided he wanted to go back to public school. You did say. Uh, which was part of his self advocacy. I love that. And, uh, we made it. We made it through the school year. He had a good school year. He um, more, I mean, more so than, and then he did find great wise. Right. But a lot of he made a lot of strides where he was able to ask for things that he needed. I love that. And ultimately, that's what's going to happen. So, for example, um, because he'd been homeschooled, he's got to take some summer school classes. Right, right, right. The only classes they offer on campus are ones for kids who have failed courses. However, he decided that he didn't want to take his summer school, the online courses at home. He didn't want to be there with me and his daddy. <laughs> yeah. So I he went and he talked to the guidance counselor about it. And so they worked it out so that he can go to campus every day. Oh, I love With the rest that. of the kids. And I was like, okay, that's those That's are major good. strides. Major, major. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that's what I want him to be able to do for himself. Like you did that. um she may have made the suggestion, but he expressed the concern to her. Right. And so and that's what happens when you are open and receptive to what is happening with kids. Yes. And you can problem solve and you can be creative and just because it isn't the way you've always done things, it opens up a lane to do things in a very different way that I think is going to help him immensely because A, it was his decision, and then B, you know, um, just just feeling empowered because it was his decision. But also, um, you know, it's a situation he set up so he gets to work through it. And so I'm I'm really excited about that. I'm really happy that that happened. It happened that way. I really do love that because agency and advocacy, especially in neurodiverse beings, <clears throat> has to be precedence, right? Like it yes. has to be set forward because this entire world and system already doesn't want people to have their needs met. Right. Let That's alone right. if they deem you, you know, different, differently abled, whatever cool new word that they call everything, or any kind of, you know, devi when you deviate from their path of like that cis, right. hetero, white, Christian, wealthy, you know, all of the things that happen. So I think that that's absolutely amazing. And for some background, I want you to, you know, reintroduce yourself to folks because some people are joining now. Hello. Um, Hello. Who are you? What do you do? And why is this story about your son something that's significant and what we usually talk about during the week? Okay, Take good. Away. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so from day to day, I'm figuring out who I am. Love but that. today I will tell you I'm Kimberly yeah. Douglas <laughs> and uh, go live with Desiree each week. And uh, my platform 
on a, on this account has mainly been about neurodivergence, and I am currently writing a book about leadership and neurodivergence, neurodiversity, and I have some updates about that we can get into later. And I'm really thinking, and, and also I work with people, uh, entrepreneurs who have ADHD and helping them set up their businesses and uh, processes. So my background is in academia. So I have a lot of organizational experience. I'm also a person, um, autistic black woman with ADHD, with a child who is autistic, uh, who has ADHD, has ADHD. Um, I knew that I would be coming to this type of advocacy and activism work uh, when he first started pre-K. Um, because nothing, no tools, no systems, no interactions I had with people around what he needed made sense to me. Right. It didn't make sense that things were as hard as they were. and. I know from being a systems person, I'm a systems thinker, a systems, I published about systems, all of this stuff. I know when things don't work, it's work for me, it's because they're not supposed to work for me. Right. And if they don't work for me and my family, and they don't work for my child, they're not supposed to. And so I knew I would come to this work. I didn't know how it would look. I thought it would be more so like as a parent coach, which I still kind of do some of that. But I mainly work with adults, usually people who have ADHD, autism, but other uh, neurodivergencies such as complex PTSD, uh, which tends to come hand in hand with those oh, things, yeah. that experience. So that's how I got here. And um, just really grateful for the insight, the perspective. But it's been a tough road. It's been a tough road of relearning what this world is and also relearning who I am inside this world. I love that. Thank you for that. And yes, we'll definitely get into the details of the book and everything that you have going on because I think it's absolutely amazing. Just keep in mind that this is labor, links in bio for donations, support, etc. And for, you know, to join Dr. Kim's community for, <coughs> for that book and links that you could join my community. As an intro, I'm Desiree B. Stevens and I pathologize whiteness. <laughs> Did you like my little like Walter Cronkite? I love, I love you. I love your, your whole segue. Thank you. I appreciate that. So what I mean by that is I pathologize whiteness as a system. It is nobody's fault how they are, what skin you're born in, but there are systems of whiteness that need to be broken down. Those foundations for me come through those 15 pillars of supremacy culture. And so basically I have been working on getting my mission more clear and yolanda's here conscious parenting coach follow her decolonize your parenting um and she's actually like what is your mission right like she is the system for she's like what is your mission what do you have to say what do you do and i'm like i just want everybody to heal she's like that's not <laughs> that's not that's not a business point <laughs> like and i'm like okay so basically <coughs> what i have found is that you guys have told me what I do, and so I guess I get to tell you what I do. I don't deem myself an anti-racist educator. I consider myself an anti-oppression, pro-liberation um, educator. So I focus on whole self-healing. Uh, specifically, it seems my target group has been white women because you guys are the cornerstone of supremacy culture and explaining and showing you how it impacts you in order for us to get to global liberation, really, mm -hmm. pretty much. So I have an online community. I have a journal that's coming out on Amazon next month, and I will be doing TikTok series now. Uh, TikTok what? what? Series, have you been invited to that? I will send you the. Time. I have not. I haven't paid much attention lately, but but I'm interested in hearing about it when yes. you have time to share. I'm gonna share it right now because then people will hear it and know. So TikTok has basically given creators access. I don't know if it's certain creators or whatever, but if you go to TikTok.com forward slash series, it is allowing you. It's basically course creation inside of TikTok. You could sell from anywhere from a dollar ninety nine. It's like one ninety nine. $4.99, $7.99, all the way up to $179.99. Good, very good. Right, you are allowed 80, up to 80 20 minute videos. And like like somebody, like we're going live right now, if at the bottom you'll see it says series. So like, let's say how we've been talking about, you know, accounts and ledgers and like kind of tying those things in together. We could build the course like literally right here on, mm -hmm. on videos. 
right? Yeah. Like we could get together and be talking outside of this app, create videos separately or together, put it together as a series. And when we're live talking mm -hmm. about these things, hit series and basically it allows a link to go into your videos and people can buy the series. Oh, great. That's great. I thought that was amazing. I was like, that is, is amazing. Cool. That, 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 that progression makes sense. That progression makes absolute sense. And I really like it because like, well, they're going to be battling with other platforms, right? Because a lot of us, I think we're trying to move into that YouTube space because it is very cool, Donna, like, because YouTube pays per click and all of the other things. And so I think that this is a very awesome and comprehensive way to bring that forward um into a place where the audience are ready you know we have a good interaction with people yada 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 which anywho so all of that to say today what the hell was our topic <laughs> hi i also have adhd so yeah mm -hmm. oh reimagining <laughs> leadership paradigms basically through a neurodiverse lens and with that i'm going to turn it over back to dr kim <laughs> so um and Desiree came up with this topic for this week, and I'm really glad you did, because one of the things I shared last week is that I really, I have a book, but it wasn't the book right. that I wanted that I wanted to publish. I started publishing pieces of it, and there were critical, like, there were, like, these dots I wasn't connecting, and, and um, this reimagining, you're talking about reimagining neurodiversity. One of the dots that I wasn't connecting, there were multiple dots that I had things that I needed to weave together, but one of the dots that I was not connecting, um, I didn't have a clear call to action because I didn't have a clear, mm -hmm. it wasn't clear who I was talking to. So I want to be clear about who I'm talking to. I believe that in order to get to the kind of future, a future in which uh, a, a, a more liberated future uh, towards our liberated goals. So I'm a person I, I like. I love futuristic stuff and thinking about trends and and th mega trends and things that are happening and innovation, and all that. But the futurism conversation does not include certain people. That's so right. what the futurism conversation is about is about innovation and technology. Well, wait a minute. That's not very futuristic. So what you're talking about is recreating power for the same people who already have power. Right. But you have all these untapped resources among a neurodiverse population of people. And you're talking about how to make AI more sophisticated and being pattern readers when you have natural pattern readers who are not even part of the conversation. Correct. So um, the core of this is that we have to look at neurodiversity. We have to look at the skills, the interests, the abilities of a neurodiverse population of people. We haven't looked at that. And a lot of that, that has to do with whiteness and suppressing uh, our ability to look at that. And here's an important connection that I had not made, which is that neurodivergent people are, some neurodivergent people are well positioned to make us look at that. Right. So it's not by accident that you and I end up on this live together. I know. I love that we found each other. I know. Kind of it's, just like it, stuck with this. And so one of the pe one of the people to help me make this connection is like uh, Tony Neighbors, and Tony. he talks about standpoint theory, and it's because of the way you and I are uniquely positioned in society mm. that we can say that we're going to design this and design is not happenstance. It is not by accident. It's not random. You design on purpose. It's intentional. You design a world that fits a neurodiverse population because you have the vision you can reimagine. And it's because of our experiences in the world from our standpoints as neurodivergent women, neurodivergent black women, that we're able to reimagine this. We're able to even insert neurodiversity into the conversation in and that was an a big, way. critical piece i was missing that i'm talking to people who are neurodivergent and who may not even see themselves as leaders but we have to provide the leadership it's that. not going to come from people who the system has worked for it is not going to come from them because they have zero incentive to think about what neurodiversity means right outside of the fact of 
which I always use in line, how to extract resources, right? Like, That's oh, right. this person could do this. Let me, you know, use right. their neurodiversity to depletion. So they're right. just so That's exhausted, right. so burnt right. out, so overwhelmed, That's right. right? Like, cause there's so many people, I think it was really poignant that you said that you were like, I'm an autistic black woman. Like, yeah. cause it's this idea, like, there's an idea, right? Like one, if we go on these binaries inside of systems of whiteness, right? Like the either or, right? So it's like, there are so many needs when you're talking about the spectrum of ASD. I'm like, it's like, oh, I need the support because my kid is autistic. I cannot stand autism moms. Let me just put that out there right That's now. That's a whole lie right there. I can't. I can't, I can't, yeah, it is. Let me not even get into that right now because I cannot, right? When now, when we're talking about like reimagining it, like you imagine all the people <laughs> living. You may think that I'm living, sing it, sing it. That's right. <laughs> because when you're living at a deficit in a system that says you need to be X, Y, Z, and if you're an outlier like yourself or myself, right? Like my background, I keep telling people I was teen mom, GED, you know, geriatric mom. I've done all of the, I've done all of the things that people say you can't and I'm still sitting pretty freaking okay. So when I'm sitting down and I'm thinking about that, I'm like, no, because I've actually know that you can actually live in a world, make a world different. Like you can. Yes. I've done it in my own life. I've made ways and spaces for myself, for others to do that. And if like we could keep doing that and expanding it, that is exactly how you reimagine something. And right. the people that don't have those needs, like those vast support needs, cannot be the people that are talking, right? Nope. It's like when I'm like, white women stop talking for black people. Stop talking. The depth or range. It's like nope. white men talking for you guys about reproductive rights. No depth, right. no range. If you are like holistic, you don't have the depth and range to even imagine the vastness of the capabilities. Right. The imagination or like the pure like, do you know what it takes to be neurodiverse and neurodivergent in this system and make it? And you so have like, to constantly, are... you have to, I, I, let me, please, let me Go jump ahead. in. Go you ahead. have to constantly be design thinking. It's exhausting. You have to, you have to constantly be a disruptor. You have to, because, and, and the disruption, you're disrupting to figure out how you can actually fit into it. So you're constantly in this mode of design thinking and working around and trying to figure out how to make something that fundamentally does not work for you right. actually works for you. And I want to I want to say here because you, you trigger something in my head. Say it. Be, so 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 the the topic that you came up with was you mentioned the word shift. And I think that's so important because. Um, that we have to talk about that. Um, just thinking about the lives that we've been doing, what it makes me think about is, is shifting from this conversation of neurodivergent people being in need. And we all have needs, and that's a very important conversation. But we have to see ourselves as the problem solvers. We have okay. to see ourselves as the people. Um, I had written some notes. Um, I wrote your notes. I saw uh, that. <laughs> um, like, like we have the skills, the the ability, the interest to to lead. So think about what we've done here on these lives. Like, if you really step back and just imagine, there are things that I can do on my own, and I will be just fine. Yep. But the two of us together on these lives, and you inside your groups, me inside my group, that is expansive. That is how it's supposed to be, right? That is multiplying. That is ex that that makes the possibilities exponential, unlimited, right? So when you think about all these skills that have been untapped and that are just sitting there in like a reserve, and all these thoughtful new ways to produce, to create. Um, this is uh, I'm just letting y'all know this is the third time the cop has ridden by here. That's ridiculous. And I'm in Wellington, Tennessee, and I'm sitting outside the Baker Community Center. Thank you. Um, make sure you third, see. Time. third time. I'm sorry. Um, so 
and I'm in a park right next to the community center. So, um, so there's creation that we can do individually, but when you take what you have fostered in your community, I take what I fostered in my community. So I think about this book. I was thinking about this book as something I've been working on over the past year, but actually I've been working on this book my whole life. Come on. And so I had to step back. So I'm now fighting the white supremacist delusion of urgency. Um, but it really is the shift that you're talking about where I need to step back and think about what this sounds like on a stage. Right. When I'm showing other neurodivergent people that it's not our deficits that define us, but it's actually the different ways that we can access power and the different pieces, like sources of power that we have. Absolutely. And I have to jump in and interject there because there's a few things that you said, right? So like, yes to the makeshift happen because that's the name of my company, right? Like yeah. and expansiveness of it all, right? Like supremacy culture and white supremacist delusion literally means a homogenous way of being, of thinking, of acting, of moving. And it's not needs based, right? It's like, this is what you have to do. You have to ascribe or prescribe to it and you have to move in this certain way or it's not going to work for you, right? right and then right. when you start shifting those paradigms, you're like, no. And when you go to support needs, right? Because whiteness as a system wants us to consistently stay living in our trauma. Parent from our trauma, exist in our trauma. We just seen an example of that now, right? Like, it's unfortunate that you're in a park and you have to be concerned about these police, right? Like, that's small ways that they reinforce you being living in your trauma. Why can you not just be in the park on the phone? Yeah, and he could be seeing and checking to see if I'm safe, but I, I, I don't know that. But they need you to be constantly aware right. of your time, yes. right? Yes. Yes. And then, like, when you have these needs-based things, and people like yourself or myself, right? Yolanda said every person I've connected with is uh, neurodiverse, and they're powerful leaders. You see, they are. Um, you do not need to be operating from supremacy standard and saying, "Oh, I am less than," because then it ignores those that have higher support needs. Right? That's right. Like Aaron, like, and I say their name because they're open, they're out about everything, and sometimes they're on lives, but right now they're in school. Aaron is ADHD, which is autistic as well as eight has ADHD. They don't have the same support need. Their autism doesn't need a lot of support. Their ADHD, right. they are borderline non-functional, right? Like, I'm like, you need water. <laughs> like, did you eat? <laughs> right? Like, their autism support needs not so high. They have a couple of safe foods. That's what they're going to eat. And that's about it. And that's pretty much where like the support needs sensory issues where like, again, that range, there are people right. that have higher support needs. And when we are operating, saying that we are at a deficit because we're neurodiverse, neurodivergent, we are saying that we can't step into this. So we need somebody to talk for us. I yes. need a, a, yes. a, a neurotypical person to speak for me. And no, the fuck I don't. The same way I don't need a white person talking for me. I'm speaking. Nope. Look at right. me, all neurodiverse, talking and shit. Look at me, right. all black, talking and shit. I don't it's need happening. anything for me. It's happening right now. And like, we have this lens that is that much greater because yes. of all of the deficits we've been handed and said like, oh, you can't operate, but we're out here operating. It's happening. You know what? I'm out here living though. I'm out here living though. So out here living. Through so we can reimagine it. Like we can because we we necessarily see outside the box. So so okay. So one one, I real I am having like fifty thousand thoughts at a time. Get it, get it. So so I realized I was stuck when I got to the end, and I had solutions, but they didn't connect in a way that I wanted them to connect. But here are some of the solutions, like the the overall picture thing that I was talking about, and then I'll go back. So. Like we need research. We need um um we need um things that happen inside organization. We need we need communities, but yes. we also need things that happen in an immediate way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down because if we know how the nuclear family actually interferes with getting our needs met. So we yes. know that happens, right? So this is about a shift in, in, in how we're thinking 
this is a shift in leadership. Leadership is recognizing that if a kid is on an IEP, you need to automatically consider that as a family that has certain needs. There you go. So if you're related to this family, once a week, go to the house, get all their washcloths and their towels and take them home and wash them and put them back on their porch folded up. Oh, I love that. Cause I'm like, I'm that. That's, that's, that's the, that's the, wait, we're tired of playing with y'all. Okay. <laughs> Let's stop fucking around here. Come do this. Come do this. Um, so, you know, that doesn't involve getting, you can watch, that doesn't involve getting people's underwear, anything like that invasion of practice, like going and picking up toys because when a family like when when families are involved in certain processes you need to think of those as signals like right. the interoceptors the signals that there's a whole other set of needs that they have right and so that they don't have to come beg you for shit or do without so nice. if the kid has an IEP, so I'm going to share my, my experience with doing the IEP when Jackson was much younger and also in the present, you know, we would go to a meeting at a school. I would spend two to three days getting ready for it, reading all kinds of academic articles, blah, 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 coming up with solutions, blah, blah, blah. So I'm exhausted by the time we get to the meeting. Right. And then when the meeting is over, guess what? I still have to take home an autistic child. Right. Right. And so what I realized was happening. Whenever we had an IEP meeting when he was younger, and, and this could still happen now, I didn't talk to him for about a week. Mm-hmm. I didn't talk to him for about a week. Why? Because I felt like I was talking to him the whole time, every day for 24 hours. Right. Because I was so preoccupied with trying to anticipate this and their bullshit over here and this, that, dude, like ninja stuff. So, rather, like, we need to start to think about when people are engaged in certain processes. That needs to indicate to us that there are need. They need meals that week. If they have an IEP meeting that week, they need meals that week. They need That's housekeeping that world. week. Like we, we, these are things that we can easily deconstruct and we can step in without being invasive. We have to. We have to. We have to. We have to rethink this. I want to add to that, like in the reimagining of what community support looks like and and what, you know, stepping in for it is, is that what I've known is that in systems of whiteness with the nuclear family and isolation and individualization playing and back to the autism moms that bother me, um, is it seems to be that you have a child with autism or who's ADHD and you don't fucking think they got it from you. I'm like, so they just they fucking popped up with this, like a splinter in their finger, like tying us back. This is why, like, for me, like, like I said, it is healing, right? It's like that intergenerational mm-hmm. work. Like, so you don't think maybe you, what about your mom who didn't ever let you touch X, Y, and Z? Right. right. Your dad who needed to wear like the same, like cut my sandwich every day, like the same lunch every day, not seeing your connection through the line, right? And then right. seeing each other as whole self beings. And then all you do is make yourself the martyr. Like I'm the mother of this autistic child. You are probably fucking somewhere on the spectrum or something, right? Like when we are looking at it from a support, standpoint like i said i was diagnosed as a child hypolexic adhd young but i never thought about it because nobody ever talked about it after my mom took me off meds there was never a conversation again in my life and now parenting my child that i'm aware of not only am i like oh shit well, Ruh, that makes sense. <laughs> this is a key component to my own life and unlocking something for me. It has helped me, like with my first child, who will be 27. I've shared, uh, you know, her and I are estranged at this point, and I'm like, damn, I did not meet a lot. I met plenty of needs, but there were definitely a lot of needs that I did not meet because I was doing it from this this, this supremacist lens point, right? She's absolutely terribly intelligent listen to how ableist this is right she's wildly intelligent had no physical you know uh disabilities there was
wasn't anything she couldn't read, move through or whatever. And then when I would notice like, you know, like the crumbling, like the falling apart, I'd have to move her whole work schedule or something yeah. because, you know, studies were coming up and I'm like, what the fuck, what are you, what are you doing? You're so smart. You're so right. capable. They yeah, keep of course. Affirming her, right? Yes. Like, you could do this. Don't if worry you just about put it. your mind to it. If you just focus and I and and she probably was so fucking at that like and not being seen. So like when we can tie those things together too, like you know what, like listen, hey, it's not just your child. You're not a fucking audience right. mom. Like stop that. Stop right. That. If you hear those, no. you stop them. You need a different type of leadership in that household. Completely. What's happening? How do you call your community in? Hey, this is what's happening. This is what we need. You know, like for me, I'm a systems person like you, right? It's like when I went to school and I went to college and I went for business, I was like, oh, this is my shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see this, right? I can tie anything to the business principles. Anything you fucking throw at me, because it's a systems operation, right? Like when I, when operations management came up, I breezed through that class. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. like that's how my brain works, right? So like, even for me, like I have my own little patterns. And what does that look like? Because I still incorporate tons of community. Because I'm like, yes, yeah, so I could do all of these things, but like, I haven't gone grocery shopping since 2018. Sure. I enter sure. the Does it cost a little bit more money? Yup. Does it save right. my sanity and overwhelm so I could actually like my children when I come home? <laughs> also, yes. Highly worth more money. And I'm saying, I'm saying, so, so that's what you can, you, there are certain things you want to ask your community for, but I'm saying to the community, I'm, and I'm saying to the community, get your shit together. That part. Get off TikTok and quit telling us how sorry you are that things have happened to people get off TikTok telling us um about your aspie supremacy get off TikTok doing all this shucking and jiving pretending like you don't know that things happen in the world that they happen in the world and start thinking creatively about how to pro provide a safety net to people and support right. for people so that they don't have to come ask you right because that's so that's really hard in a system that tells us that we're supposed to be bootstrapping that's have right our shit together and that's that we right. don't have certain disabilities which usually is physical right right it's still that's right physical disabilities apparently you're capable but like i was going to talk about this and then i forgot because adhd um we I do, we do to, what we do yeah i went to a 90s party um um in the West End in Atlanta at the Hay Community Center that Casey, one of the co-founders put together. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. It was like, it was a kickback for adults because we're all like working with kids or doing something in the system. So I, I'm, I'm cooling. I went my little tanks out, my little jean shorts and some Jordans and I'm looking hella 90s. I did one little Mary and Meth rendition with her like singing it and I was in bed for two days. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. But people see you for one moment, like, oh, she's out there dancing. And but it took me two days in bed to recover. Yep. Yep. Physically, yep. to not feel the my nerves on, and I'm medicated. I promise you to the fucking <laughs> eye uh, You know, I'm like, literally, it took two days to recover from that. So yeah. even when you see somebody that's seemingly able-bodied, first of all, that's absolutely ableism right like coming right. up with these things like how do you support yourself start with self first that's right no you have to start with yourself first and you know what but and I, but i'm gonna go back i want to go back and i want to go back to uh what we were talking about earlier we are uniquely positioned to see certain things it is important to this conversation that it takes you two days to recover it is very so so you are now positioned to lead and to design the future in a certain way in which right. you understand what rest really feels like, what, what rest is needed behind be certain things. You're rest going to, if you structure work, it is, it, and if you structure things for people, you are now going to structure things with that in mind. Correct. And, 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 and like Lindsay right here, it was like, you know, I'm still recovering from vacation. Dr. Kim knows, cause I reached out to her when I came back from Mexico, my friend's wedding. I was like, so I can't do anything for a whole week now. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. Just, 
I just cannot. It's impossible. I cannot show up. And we don't need to push ourselves. And like what you're saying, like when you're reimagining. So let's say I'm running a company. We're not saying that capitalism is going to die with this reimagining. No, that is the no. goal. That is the goal. But when you're talking about putting neurodiverse people in heads of leadership, at, oh, oh, consulting, I don't even want to be the CEO, actually, because the ADHD won't let me last that long in the company. Uh, but like consulting on things like that, like you said, reimagining school days. Like right. when my kids were finished testing, I was like, why the fuck are we still in school? And my friend commented, because they need 181 days in school. I was like, why? Right, right. School right. is out. Like my kid literally... My, School's done. They right. are done now. They took your fucking required tests. Why are we still torturing not only the children, but the teachers? That's right. That's right. They're That's done. Absolutely right. If that is right. your ultimate goal, if the government is forcing you to give you these stats so they know how many prisons to build, um, I, I mean, I've reached my quota. What are we doing right. now? What are we right. doing and why? And we need to stop that. And that's what reimagining looks like, right? Going to a three-day school week uh, or like another thing is I have one kid who's like up with the birds. I have another one that's like could sleep till 10. That needs 12 hours of sleep. Why do? Why are we not staggering school start days? Well, and one of the things, so I talked to uh, talked before about the Pearl and I was a consultant on um, helping the founder with that school. Right. You know, one of the things that we looked at um, and this is why it worked well for my son, because his neurodivergent mother helped work on it that part. Um, and who has studied this stuff. And one of the things we looked at, because it's a high school that also serves middle schoolers, you have to look at the research about start times. Yes. It, it doesn't make sense. Teenage bodies are very different from other childhood bodies. And they tend to sleep later. They tend to require. Um, well, I know I don't want to get into other stuff, but they tend to sleep later. Yeah. So why are you starting classes at 7 a.m.? For those that does not make sense. That's not a right. needs based organization. Right. So that's an administrative day. But we're not talking about building a new administration. We're talking about building a school that actually works for children. Right. And so that's why what has happened with that school in uh, Dr. Robin Har Har Harwick could talk more about this. But what has ended up happening is at least 60, almost 70% of the, the kids who are attracted to that school are neurodivergent and many of them are autistic. And isn't that beautiful? So and it was not created met. for them. Hmm? And isn't it beautiful to have their needs met? It's so simple. Right. Tiffany says, right. and let's talk about when you, you can't recover and you gotta keep going, it's hard to rest. Yeah, sometimes like I've lived in a space in my life where there was no rest, right? Like I said, like you may have missed earlier, like when I was talking about like watching now as I'm navigating Aaron's ADHD, I'm like, damn, survival mode and ADHD was hella beneficial to me because it let me run through it, right? Like no stop, non-going. I had youth on my side. I was not suffering chronic pain and I was just able to go, 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 go. And right. then I'm like, it's taken me years to recover. Like right. years. Like when they say it takes years for burnout recovery, they're not playing. That no, no, they're not. Joke. You know, this makes me think me. of this makes me think about your your work uh, with white women. So I see a lot of people on TikTok, social media, and, and talk with a lot of people who are they're not actually in burnout; they're actually in the recovery from burnout, mm -hmm. and they have the resources and they have the means to take the recovery time once they acknowledge and own up to the fact that they need the recovery time. Right. So when we talk about leadership and we talk about design, if you have the power of resources to give people space to have recovery, you should do that. That is a way you can lead. So like, like let's have a real conversation about redistrib redistribution of resources. Right. Um, you get to get on here as a white woman with resources in proximity to power, and you get to talk about your recovery and things that you're discovering about yourself. Nice. And a black woman has to get on here and talk about how she's discovering it while clocking in. Right. Like, we have to talk about that. 
And because if, I think we need you, to talk about it from a personal, you know how like I do the interpersonal systemic, right? The thing is, is that they've made us so dependent on these government ideas, right? Right. So it's like right. Redistribution from the top. And I'm like, no, like the majority exists here. This is that's a right. pyramid scheme. Right. right? So right. like these people ain't going to give anybody underneath. No, they're not. Shit. It's not set up to. It's not so set up it to. literally has to be us. Like it has, it to, has be to be us. us to reimagine, to redistribute wealth. If you are in that kind of a position, like, and, and it doesn't have to be monetary, right? This is not like my little no, slide no. pitch, but like I have been offered like, hey, if you want to do a retreat somewhere, I have, you know, I have a chateau in, 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 in Paris and I'm like, fuck yeah, I, let me write that resource down so when I'm able to get myself to Paris, I could right. offer something like that. If you have resources that are able for recovery, if you have land, and That's you right. hear many of us trying to build community, right? Yolanda gave me a really uplifting story that one of her friends, somebody was like, I love what you're doing. I have extra land, here you go. You That's may right. not be the person that wants to lead a community, right. but you have like, you know, you have the resources. <laughs> That's redistribution of wealth. That's right. It's and, lead, and leadership and means a lot of different things. Leadership means a lot of different things. Leadership doesn't mean being in charge. If from in my definition in my book, it is about perceiving needs, responding to needs, and meeting needs with the, with the with the attempt uh, with the intention of say those three again. Huh? Say those three again. Perceiving needs, perceiving needs, uh, responding to needs, responding to needs, with, and with the intention of meeting those needs and meeting those needs. You may meet those needs, but then other like things, that. whatever. But so I want, I want to go. Okay, so like even if you have something to offer someone, but because they lack other resources, they can't even use it, then. What needs to happen is somebody else jump in and find a way to help them be able to use the resource that you're offering them. Right. And it does have to come from us. I totally agree with that. It has to come from us. And so when we use the word reimagine, it really is about reimagining. That's where we get to like the conversations about the shadow work and, 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 and something and that I to You cannot possibly. You can't reimagine something with a colonized mind, right? Like you it's cannot. like you cannot. What's that fucking quote? Like you know, like meeting the problem with the same thought pattern. There's something there. There's something right. There. Yeah, like uh, yeah, like the person who construct or whatever who constructed the problem can't construct the solution. Right. The person who has you oppressed is not seeking your liberation. That's damn no. Sure. And no. If you have a colonized mind, like that's the mind frame that you're doing. We're just keep recreating the same system where decolonization is something that is needed so you can even begin to reimagine. Right. Like what that is this a look like outside of this paradigm? It exists completely different. Mm -hmm. Because it can't that's a basic requirement. Yeah, we can't keep doing the same thing. Like it's killing us. It's killing all of because us. Because it starts with your fundamental beliefs. Because your action and your thoughts, your actions are indicative of what you believe. If you believe that people are human beings and you believe that people's needs are more important than their ability to um, show that they qualify to have their needs met, then you are going to think, well, wait a minute, I actually have this resource and I actually could do X, Y, and Z if I got with two other people so that we could get it together without having to involve that person, right? Because one of the things that people make us do when they come to us with solutions and resources, they make us do work to get it. That comes into the policing, right? This is right. what I mean yes. by the colonized yes. mind. You yes. want to police the poor. You want to police what people are doing. You want to police how black women are speaking. You want to police because the white supremacy and supremacy culture sets up a system that needs middle management in that pyramid scheme. So middle right. management usually has the resources, right? Like you have That's an HR right. department, right? Like this is, America's a business. So you it have an HR department. So you need to always go to the HR department, but now the HR department wants to know why you need that much money for pencils. What are right. you doing with the pencils? That's right. That's right. Uh, and, like, and, and, I'm um, using and, my pencils. Like I'm, I'm using my pencils. They're all gone now. I need more pencils. 
should be just as simple, but because you want to be so busy micromanaging something and right. releasing something instead of meeting the needs, you want something done, but you don't want to give me the resources to do it. And we have the ability, there is enough resources amongst the people right. to actually reimagine an entire new world and to begin to create it in your own self. Lindsay mm -hmm. said over here, I was taught if you are a leader, you eat last and speak last. And I'm going to challenge that. Hell no. I'm going to eat first because how can I? I can't think if I'm hungry. And I'm going to speak because I know what the fuck I need. And therefore, right. I'm going to make sure other people's needs are met too. Because this is why I always go back to the centering yourself, going mm -hmm. back to me. I'm going to meet my needs first. And because I'm meeting my my needs, I want everybody else's needs first. That's right. That's right. Needs met. Because if I'm living in a space of, I, of scarcity, which America creates a scarcity mindset. If I'm living at a deficit, why the fuck I want to see you do better? Like, let's just right. be realistic with that. Like, let's just keep right. this 100. We want to come into these works and pretend that we're altruistic. And that is an altruistic That's right. idea, right? Like, I'm going to eat like, I'm going to eat first. And I want the big piece of chicken, fam. Fuck That's that. That's right. Okay. I want the breast. Yes, because like if I'm going to be doing this work and I'm leading the way, I damn sure need to be strong, taken care of. I need to do this. And then because I'm like, damn, I'm able to do all of these things because my needs are met. I was able to do this work. I was just telling a client today. I'm able to do this work, one, because I have the capacity to do it. Two, I have enough ease in my life to be talking to y'all at one o'clock in the afternoon. That's right. And because I know what that ease feels like. I want that for everybody because right. I'm liberated from certain paradigms. I want that for everyone else because I have decolonized my ideas, my thoughts and decolonizing every day and every moment, moment to moment. I want that for everybody else. So if right. you are living in a deficit, you are coming at it from as a savior. You are coming That's at right. it as That's right. Like That's right. That's right. Altruistic thing like uh, and martyrdom. And those are That's all right. things of colonization. I am nobody's martyr. Here's what I know. I'm free and I want everybody else free that's right that's right and you know what you're able to do this because you have the ease but you also if you're like me i don't want to project but i do it because i want the ease yes i want more ease this gives me ease this Correct. gives me time to talk about my ideas and to create more space for myself yes yes and there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to take care of yourself right no. like those things these paradigms have come up because of christian supremacy right that's right like, that's right suffering is the fucking crux of christian that is right that's right like you it, should it, be pious and poor and suffering as christ did on the cross I, I, if christ wanted to suffer he would have never asked father why have thou forsaken me that's right so and and the thing is, it's that that's bypassing. That, that's bypassing. That is, and and some he has he just said this like doing a better job of listening. That that that's a type of interpersonal, emotional, spiritual bypassing where you do this sacrificial bullshit. It's like, well, I won't eat first, or I won't do this first, or you know, uh, putting people hit it. No. Um, because when push comes to shove, you're not going to do that. Let's just be oh. real with that. Because if your stomach start rumbling too much and start mm -hmm. getting bloated, that goes out the window. Quickly. So, so, so let's just be real clear. I understand where it comes from, but that is a type of bypassing in which you do not have to listen to the people whose needs need to be served. Right. That means you really are listening to your own needs and you're saying, um, I'm, I am a savior. I am taking care of other people more than I, you know, almost flogging yourself or whatever. Yeah. But when that is no longer cool, then the people who are who are you're really objectifying, um, then your relationship with them really changes. So that is a bypass to actually listening to what they say they need. They don't need for you to let them eat first. That may not necessarily be what the need is. The question is about what is the need that they have identified for themselves. That's what they need in a leader. That part. And when you see, like when you're talking about leadership and reimagining leadership, I like to believe that people that follow me, that are learning from me, that watch me, hell, that hang out with me on Facebook, are like, I, I, I want to do whatever she's doing. Because whatever she's doing, it looks joyous, right? Yes. Like, 
she is full yeah. of joy. She wakes up, I'm with the shits every morning. I post some really obnoxious, unnecessary fucking thing just to get a laugh and a giggle. And that for me is leadership. I want to show you right. how I'm living. And that's if right. that's how you want to live too, this is how you do it. But if I am sacrificing, I'm not going to sacrifice myself. If I'm going to sacrifice my needs, then what that does is it teaches my children to do the same thing. That's and right. It teaches other people who are watching me. Well, if she's going to eat last, I guess I could eat last, but they ain't ate in a week. Right. That's a problem. They need to eat right. now. They need to right. eat first. You know what? I might right. be able to eat last, but I need to assess my hunger level first. You know what I'm saying? And like, right. okay, like there was a meme that was going around, like, you know, about boomers and whatever generation, like, you know, and like their dad is talking about like capitalism. And if somebody has a sandwich and this and other thing, and they're like, oh, millennials. And they were like, oh, I would just give them the sandwich. I said, okay, would you? <laughs> like, it, it, now let's bring it down to another level that's more realistic in the world, right? Because there, it, it's very have and have not. I'm not giving nobody a sandwich. I will mm -hmm. serve my sandwich. Yeah, I will sure. put it in quarters. We all have to eat. Mm -hmm. And we do. leadership is saying everybody's needs has to be met. That, right. It has to be right. met. And to lead, you should lead through example. I meet my needs, therefore I want you to meet your needs. Right. And I want you to assess your needs. What are right. you? Because you may not need to eat. You know what? You came over here and you was already full. Okay, cool. So you don't need to eat. What do you need? Right. Then? But right. if I'm going to tell them this is how you lead and this is what you need to do, it's setting forth another prescription, which is absolutely colonization, right? Like, it is. No, it this is. is how this gets done instead of like you always talk about meeting needs because mm -hmm. we all have different support needs. Mm-hmm. Every single person, every single need is just as individual as that person, right? I have three children that live in my home. Every single one of them have a different need at the same damn time. Right, that's what I'm going to say, yes. At the same and that's time. why that's why it's important to talk about neurodiversity. Correct. Because even, even like when we're talking about neurodivergence, at some point, it doesn't take us far enough into right. the conversation of understanding that these things show up in many different ways. Right. Um, and then also, when we start talking about neurodivergence, we tend to get in this binary, neurotypical, neurodiversity. Quite frankly, we don't know who the fuck is neuro neurotypical. Like, we really don't even know what that is because we don't even have enough research. We yeah. haven't studied, like, all the black men in prison. We haven't studied. Like, we... The, the intellectual curiosity has not been there for right. us to say that these people are... are definitely neurotypical so it's like you kind of paint yourself in the corner now there is room in the conversation to talk about that and i do use that word but it's also important if you're talking about meeting needs you have to i, I, I believe we have to uh really talk about neurodiversity and how even the things that we give the same labels to show up so differently in, in different, different and sometimes differently in the same body it, yes. And in different situations. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Like in different situations, things are going to show up. And like when we start moving away from that colonized idea of binary, this or that, either or, you start opening up nothing. Nothing in nature is binary. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. are in nature, right? Like that colonization separated us and made us lord over everything. That's right? right. And created a supremacy culture for all of the things. So apparently humans are supposed to be like the lords of all of these things as if we are not a part of. And I, like my needs change in depending on the situation. Right. Depending on, did, did I eat? Did I drink? Am, am, am I 40 to 35? Like in this same body, my needs have been, like I said, Saturday, I went and I didn't get out of bed until Monday. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, nom, 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 nom. and it is what it is. And that's just what, and that's pretty much what it was. My kids didn't go to school on Monday. Everybody got a text. I was like, yep, it's a bad body day. Nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. That simple. And, 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 and we don't have a system that supports that. Right. Because like, then like you have people who are living in fear. Oh, if my kids don't go to school, then they're going to call the government or they're going to do this and the other thing. Because and they will. My remedy to that is that what an excused absence or an unexcused absence is the problem. You know what yeah. I do every quarter? I go through whenever my kids are absent and then I just like write letters. 
And right. Now, excused absence. And they're right. Like, I don't know. They had a fever. They were sick. Say whatever the fuck you want. It's just accounts and ledgers that we keep talking about. That's right. Say whatever that's you right. need to and just put that there. And like, and now the government is out of your business. Like, that's just what it right. is. You want a doctor's right. note? Uh, we're holistic. I don't have a primary care doctor. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, like, you know. Like, well, and you know what? But that's an example. That's an example of how one person in your school district or one person in your state can say you know what i know my community has like bad body days so let me sit down and draft letters that people can use to give to their school and communicate with the school about this perfect that is something very simple that somebody not you but but somebody else could do to say hey let me take this one thing off your plate in terms of worry about it and let me show you exactly how to deal with this. And do not capitalize off of it. Don't let me see one of you fuckers out here with a Canva template that you are selling right. for $9.99. Right. It takes That's you right. Of five minutes, put a link in your bio with a free PDF. Don't nobody want That's right. I love That's to right. fucking boss babe every goddamn thing. Do not capitalize That's right. on it. Just That's don't. right. Just fucking That's don't. right. Or be the person like when testing was going on, I had a bad body day and my homegirl Kia call, um, called me and was like, what's going on? I was like, hey man, I can't get out of bed. She was like, absolutely not. Sit them kids on the porch. And she That's got right. all three of my kids to school in spite of getting her own child and her grandchild to school. But also I was intentional. It's about being intentional and reimagining leadership looks like I made sure my kids went to the same school her kid did. So I would not be putting her out. My right. daughter goes to the same daycare that her grandson comes. So because I knew my needs. Because I was thinking about my needs first. There will be right. days where I need my kids picked up. There will be days I need my kids dropped off. And the same thing. So though we are living miles and miles apart, our kids are in the same central area. And it's nothing but a few minutes of inconvenience, right? Right. Somebody no, said, do you guys wonderful. have a podcast or a YouTube channel? Hey, Chris, thank you for joining us. This right now is our um, podcast, but I personally have a YouTube channel that I've been downloading these onto and re-uploading, and that link is in my bio, so you can re-catch this there, and we're here every week. So. Yep. Nice. Thank you no, for joining us. I'm just thinking, okay, so um, just one more thing, and I, and I know I keep I, this is fresh in my mind, so I keep using examples from school, but these are just simple examples. One of the things um, that I think people people forget about stuff that they can, they can do in real life. Um, I believe that, um, and, and I've tried some things like this before, everybody who has a child in special education at that school, they need their own PTO. Ooh. They need to start their own PTO for special education at that school and in that district. Okay. Because I can just about promise you that the things that show up in my child's IEP and results are not going to show up in most people. Right. Because when we first started doing this, I was reading like 20 academic articles before I went to those meetings. Mm-hmm. And I had solutions that they did not have. Right. That, they, that were not even on their radar because they don't come with those kinds of solutions. They come with the solutions that they've always done. So why is my IEP process working better? And, and I'm not talking about IEP coaches. I'm not, and I'm not, hello, Jesse. And I'm not taking from IEP coaches. But if you just look at the whole IEP process, I had um, the whole IEP process. Like, I think, um, like, if you had some kind of parent group just for a special education within that school and within that district, like, one person can help with the language in these reports. One person can help everybody with the process. One person helps with the post-meeting follow-up. Because you don't just go to one meeting. and, and, And you don't go just get one set of results. Then there are meetings after that. And communications in between this is even bigger than hiring a coach this is first of all people don't even understand what the process is because you never if the full process is never laid out to you it's never laid there so when you think about leadership and redesigning and reimagining and it does require you to shift your thinking away from your own superiority um, in a lot of cases but if you really want to reimagine 
you can reimagine that you actually have a community among the parents who have children in special education. In Absolutely. School. Absolutely. And I think what is important in that is like is is with community. Like, you know, I'm a big person on you need community. When my kids I had shared on my Instagram, I love the I love, love, could not speak more highly about the school that my children go to. And I was an unschooling mom, but I'm super glad that they are in this school. But during the testing, they were like, yo, so check it out. This grade after test, these next two days, they can when test is over, come get your kids. And I was like, hell yeah, right? Like half right. a day, they were like, these kids need it, right? I brought Aaron home, they just went to sleep. Like, they're like, good night, goodbye. You some good sleep. Thank you, they're like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? And like one parent turned around on my Insta and was like, I don't know, this goes back to, this is gonna tie together my final thought, but this goes back to the whole, like not eating first sort of thing, you know? I don't know how I like then this is me paraphrasing. I'm not sure if I really like this idea because what about, you know, parents like me that have to work. So this is how you wind up with um hey sweetie, this is how you wind up with people making these laws that will because they are not their needs are not being met. Which fair, I get it. It sucks. You got to be at work until six. And we know that for many of us, public school is free childcare that we don't have to worry about. And I don't, I can't figure out picking up my kid at 12. One, right. let's talk about a few things. The school wasn't closed. Right. So it's not like you had to get your kid the hell out of there. They right. were saying, if you have the ability, come get your child. Right? right. But then obviously you feel bad if other kids are going home and your kid is not. And, and yes, that sucks. But then this is where community happens, right? That's the right. same friend that took my kids when my body was down, I picked her daughter up and she right. just came home with me. That's right. Because I have the ability to get them. And if That's I needed right. to get three or four more kids, as long as you don't care that I curse and they're going to be in the backyard being ignored with popsicles, your kid could come home with me too. Like, That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> so right. The community, <laughs> meeting those needs and really working together is going to be what reimagining it looks like and really kind of getting away from like I think like you said there is room in the conversation for neurodivergent but recognizing that to call somebody neurodivergent means somebody has to be neurotypical and that feeds into the binary and what the fuck is neurotypical at that's this right. point we all have different needs and that's neurodiversity that's all right all of our needs need to be and then there's other things that impact that right your spiritual practices your physical abilities your emotional abilities your socioeconomic status all of those things are going to impact your neurodiversity and where and how your needs are being met so those are my final thoughts links in bio for anything else that i'm doing and have going on please you know donate support follow along i'm coming back full time to tiktok in june with a whole bunch of stuff that i've been working on in the background so stick around it's going to be super duper fun and dr kim circle it back to your book and what you got yeah on. so I'm, I'm still working on my book and it's taking a little bit longer than i expected but i'm resisting the uh the, the pool of urgency because there really isn't any um but um but i'm trying to take my time and produce the book that i want to produce um, in the meantime you can support my crowdfund still and you can also join my community on um so once you support the crowdfund you can join my community on substack where i, I talk about some of the ideas from the book um and i'm really going to lead into um just what are you going to do I want to know what you're going to do. I want to know because what are you going to do? You can only, you can answer that once you've addressed certain things. So the certain things you're just not going to do if you haven't done preliminary work to really deconstruct some things. Yes. And so what you're going to do is just tell people how sorry you are that you're seeing black trauma porn or, um, try to distance yourself from whiteness. If that's what you're going to do, then that means you're not ready to leave. But there are lots of people who are, who identify as neurodivergent and who are ready to leave. My book is for those people. Love that. Love that.
I love that. Thank you so much for showing up with me and Thank continuing you. Thank you. to work. And, you know, moving with my needs <laughs> because not all, I can't always do it, right? So I appreciate you. I appreciate what we are co-creating, right? And that is for me what I push forward is a co-creation. That's for me, reimagining means what are we co-creating, right? That's right. It means new agreements because this world that we are currently in, we are agreeing to whether it's silently or actively until we start co-creating something else. So. Mm -hmm. Let's keep that at the forefront. Thank you for being here, Donna, and everybody else that was here. And again, if what is today? Today's Wednesday? Yes, the 23rd, I believe. I've, I've lost track of the dates, but the 23rd, I believe. I don't know what, uh, yeah. But today's 24. Wednesday, so oh, sorry, on Friday, this will be uploaded on my YouTube. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see, like, hey, you could catch me in Dr. Kim's live. You'll just see when it's actually available. So Friday, this will be available. And thank you all. Links in bio. Come into community. Let's talk. Let's reimagine. That's it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Get into this. You can't get Right. I fit comfortably between the retro and next though. Terminator X with a Tyrannosaurus Rex flow. Demonstrating how to be live and direct so the rest can expect nothing less than perfecto. This track kind of reminds me of Tribe in the 90s. I guess I'm on a quest to align.